Hey, welcome back to NK's Drawing Database. I'm Professor Mark Leone. Today's lesson is we're going to look at drawing materials. What are the materials that you need? What type of pencils? What type of erasers? What type of uh, rulers are you going to need? What are the other type of ink pens that you, you, you need to use, etc.? So those are things that we're going to look at in this particular short video lesson. So stay tuned. I'll be right back and I'll try to show you as much as you'll need to know to be knowledgeable and competent to get started. Okay? See you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, welcome back. So now we're going to talk about drawing materials uh, and look at the various different drawing materials that are out there. What do you want to look for? What do you want to think about uh, when you go to purchase them? And some of the pitfalls and some of the different aspects of uh, what you want to use and what you want to, um, uh, how do you want to approach your drawing when you when you go to make make drawings? So uh, I've got a ton ton of materials out in front of me. You can't see them; they're off screen. I'll bring them on screen as we we start to to work. And uh, I've got some just uh, sketch paper here that I'm going to make marks on too as well. Nothing special, just Strathmore drawing, drawing and sketch paper, white sketch paper. So that's that's um. Uh, Kind of the setup that we're that we're looking at uh, right now. Okay, let's get started. Um, let me bring the graphite pencils uh, into to play here. So you know I've used about every graphite pencil on the market, and they really are uh, about the same. Uh, with this one just being kind of a regular number two pencil. So I brought it out here, and I and I want to show you that. So you know graphite essentially um, is. A, an earth mineral and it comes um, unmined and it's mined and then it's uh, crushed and ground up and it's put into, baked into these these wood shafts like so, okay? And um, so it's not full graphite, although you can you can buy full graphite pencils on the market, which I don't really suggest because they break pretty easy, but any brand will really do pretty well. Uh, I've got in front of me Faber Castell, this this one here. Uh, I've got Artist Loft, this one here. This one is um, Kimberly, and there's a number number uh, a Faber Castell here. And there's also uh, General uh, Graphite pencils as well. They're all they're all pretty good. So graphite comes um, naturally occurring. But it's very, very soft. So when you make a mark with graphite, it's going to be very, very dark and very oily. So if you've never worked with graphite before, it's going to be an interesting experience. It's very, very oily material. Now, you can buy graphite in a pack, which I would. You can get them in a big range uh, of about 12 to 15 pencils, and they come from 6H or so, <clears throat> excuse me, which is the hardest to 6B, 8B even, which is the softest. And how they get that hardness and softness is that they add a little clay into the graphite when they're processing it. And the more clay they add, the harder the graphite pencil is. Like for instance, I have this one, this one, this graphite pencil here, and it's an HB. And it can still get you know, pretty pretty dark actually. You'd be surprised uh, what it can what it can do in terms of you know smudging, etc. But we can go all the way up to this is a four B. Um, it's not very sharp, but you can see how dark this gets. This can get pretty dark. You know, as I make a mark, of course it smudges pretty well so the difference between this this HB pencil that I have here in the 4B 4B is softer so anything on the B side is much softer and the higher the number the the more extreme it is on the harder softer scale so a 2H is harder than uh, an HB and a 4H is harder than 2H well, a 4B pencil is softer than a 2B graphite pencil, like these two brands. 
So the, the 2B here is a little bit softer, excuse me, harder than the 4B. So the extremes, the, the higher the number you get to more of the, the extremes. Okay, so that's, that's graphite. You know, graphite is an excellent drawing uh, material for sketching, for uh, quick sketching, for longer rendering. And when I want to sharpen a graphite pencil, I can use a knife, which, which I suggest, or I also like to use these little handheld sharpeners. Now, I've got a few here. And the only thing I'll say about the handheld sharpeners, the great thing is, is that they're pretty inexpensive, fortunately. And so you can buy several. Uh, you can buy replacement blades. You can see this one here has got a little blade there that uh, can come out with a tiny, actually very tiny Phillips head screw. And you can buy replacement uh, blades, which are great. Even, even these as well. So that's something you can do. I, I think that the heavier they are, the weighted they are, a little, they're a little bit, I noticed that they're a little bit better. But when you're sharpening, you know, you can use this handheld sharpener and it makes a pretty nice, pretty nice point. You can see that. So brush that off. You've got some nice, you know, sharpened, sharpened, uh, you know, blunt material, which I think works, works pretty well. And then you still leave a little bit of the shaft uh, on the side if you want to get a broader, you know, stroke like that. So you can see, you know, kind of a range of different stroking uh, ways to make to make a mark from a very fine tipped point right to a very broad kind of a broad point like that and again the handheld sharpener with the graphite pencil i think is pretty it, it's pretty standard and it's probably best for for graphite although you can use a blade like i have here this particular blade and you can also you can also sharpen. I just think that you know if you really if you really want to expose a lot of the a lot of the shaft with graphite, I think that's great too. And see, so you have much more ex, uh, much more exposed tip. So if you're doing um, a really large drawing in graphite, which you may do later. I'll move those over to the side. You may find that uh, you're going to need uh, a more blunt instrument. Now they make graphite, pure graphite sticks. I don't think I have any in front of me. Uh, you could do that too, or you could sharpen this. I've got about a half inch uh, lead exposed, and you can see how I can get a lot of graphite laid down pretty quickly. So that works well too. The only the only thing about exposing the lead like I'm doing it um, is such in such a, a a long exposure. It's about what a half inch, right? Is that they could become weak, so they break they break pretty easy. So if you have a heavier touch, like I always had when I was younger, uh, they do they do tend to break, and that's also the case. Uh, also in charcoal as well, and of course you can you can smudge these too as well. Now you can buy powdered graphite, which I'll show at a later time. That's kind of a little bit beyond beyond the beyond the basics. I think I have some right here, and so yeah, I'll go ahead and show you. So powdered graphite uh, comes in a jar. So any of you that know my work. Uh, Personally, though, my friends that are watching this video or any, any of my former students or current students, if you've seen my large-scale work that I use with different latex paints and, and earth and dirt and acids on a large scale, you know I use a ton, ton, ton of this stuff. So the um, powdered graphite is the same thing that you use or comes in your graphite pencil. Same stuff. But the difference is it is ground up and very flowery, uh, flower-like, so meaning it's like baking flour. 
So pure powdered graphite that's been mined and, and cured and, and processed. So you can see there, if you can see a good shot of that and get some light on that, that comes in a very powdery, flaky, you know, kind of consistency. And you can use this with a chamois or a brush. And you can see that. I've got some of that on my finger here. And you can see how shiny that is. And you can rub that into a surface or you can use a brush. There, there are plenty of different applications for that, but it's very hard to get very blunt, fine, specific detail with uh, powder graphite. But it is, it is a product that I think is worth, worth utilizing it, and I certainly assign it in uh, my, uh, it's certainly advanced classes, and it's something you want to be mindful of, but you can cover a large, broad surface uh, with your hands or with a chamois or with a paper towel or with a brush, anything you want. So it's, it's quite, um, quite versatile that way. But it is certainly messy and kind of metallic. I would say, you know, when you're using uh, powder graphite, watch your, watch your nostrils, watch, um, because it does get airborne, it can get in your nostrils, and if you're allergic, that, that might be something to, uh, I think, be careful of as well. So I guess lastly with graphite, we know a little bit about the history. I'll say this, I brought this just simple number two pencil uh, out here with me. And it, they're good drawing utensils too. They're about a 2B to an HB in terms of what comes off the market when they call just a number two pencil. But what I like to, to utilize is the tip. And we'll talk about erasers in a moment. So this can be a very expressive uh, tool as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you have a, a whole handy number two pencil round, or if you don't have, like say if you're on the road and you're sketching and, and you don't have graphite pencils, but somebody has a number two pencil, hey, you can sharpen it up and use it to draw with, or you can use it, use the eraser. And it, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty nice. It's about an HB, maybe a 2B in terms of its, its hardness and also uh, its softness as well. Okay, so I wanna move on now. Let's move on to uh, charcoal and uh, talk a little bit about charcoal and some of its properties here. So charcoal is different than graphite in that it is carbon, well they're both carbon based, so that's that, but they Charcoal is generally burn, a type of burned wood, and it's kind of a doweled wood that they burn. And I'll, first I'll show you charcoal pencils, which is an extremely versatile material. And notice I've got different uh, uh, forms of usage here. I, I find that the best charcoal pencil on the market and the only one that I suggest for my students is the General's Charcoal Pencil. And they come in a range of hardnesses from uh, hard to soft to uh, extra soft. And you can kind of see, I'll zoom in here a little bit, and you can kind of see their labels uh, a little bit to help you. So it, kind of my mantra is, is when you're buying charcoal pencils, buy the orange. In, in orange label and, and make it general. So the how they get soft and extra soft and hard and medium is the same uh, way in turn uh, they, they get in terms of graphite pencils. They add clay. They bake clay into the charcoal material. So the more clay that's baked in, the harder they get and the, uh, the less clay, uh, the softer uh, it, it gets. So this is a medium here and I've got this one you know pretty sharpened up here. In, you know, in charcoal, it looks different, it feels different than graphite. You know, it's very smudgeable, just like graphite is. So most dry medium drawing, you know, is very smudgeable. I've just got a paper towel here, kind of smudging it. And you can manipulate around that with your fingers, with your hands or with a brush or with the paper towel 
you know, whatever, whatever you have uh, works, works pretty nicely. Um, so they do come in a wood shaft. I think one warning with charcoal pencils is you buy uh, hard, medium soft, extra soft, and you can get them in a packet or you can buy them individually, is that they, they tend to, they can break if you're not careful, if you drop them, or sometimes in shipping, when they, these are shipped, they break in the shaft and you don't know until you start to sharpen and it continually breaks. So don't, don't be surprised if that happens to you. Don't fret when you're learning to sharpen uh, your, your utensils and I'll give a lecture on that soon. Uh, it's kind of a little learned craft. Uh, unfortunately, is that they can break inside. So these have been around, what, since 1889, quite a bit. So General's Charcoal Pencil. The Again, the medium is kind of a nice intermediate range. You can get pretty dark. You can get pretty dark all over with any kind of charcoal, quite frankly. Um, and then the extra soft, like this one, can get you can get dark even even quicker. So... You know, I don't, I don't think there's any any drawing tool material that's more versatile than the charcoal. Charcoal is so versatile because you can smear it around, smudge it, erase it, and get deep, rich, really rich darks, and then erase it right out. So I'll go back and take the the number two uh, pencil and look at that. I can subtractively take you know, take that right out for ex uh, expressive, you know, kinds of erasing. So that, that's really kind of a, a wonderful quality to the charcoal. Not that you can't do that with graphite, but there comes a point when the graphite gets so oily because of its uh, naturally occurring ele uh, uh, mineral quality that it gets too greasy. And so charcoal is much drier. So that's one big difference. Uh, in the two is that charcoal is quite a bit drier. And then um, when sharpening your uh, charcoal pencil, what I, what I teach my students is to create a shaft that's a little bit longer like this one. I think that's better. Although I'll say this when I draw, I, sometimes I'll do, I'll do this, but even if it's shorter like that, that's fine if I need it. Sometimes I have a tendency to break these. These can get very very, very delicate. So just quickly, when I sharpen here, I'll show you, is I just expose that shaft back and I'm using a carpenter's knife to expose more of the shaft like so. And that can be tricky. I can't tell you how many times when I was a student I would break these off on my own. And then, of course, you can sharpen that to a point. And I'll show you how to do that uh, in a moment as well. So let me, let me brush this off, get this cleaned off. Or you can use a brush like I have here, a drafting brush, like so, to clean that off. These are about $10 or $15, and they, they last you a lifetime. I've got several several of these, so I've got a couple here, or I found these, or somebody left these in the studio sometime and they move out, or whatever, things happen like that. But it's just a nice, simple brush uh, you can use um, to kind of brush away fragments or materials. But you have to be careful. If you have a, like a long-term drawing and it's really delicate, but it's still on that stage where uh, it could be a little smudgy, you know, you have to be careful in that you don't want to um, use a heavy brush like this and you, you could smudge your, your drawing in, in some, some area that you've got real, you know, nice specific area like a nice, you know, highlight on the eye or something really detailed. If you, if you brush this too hard, you might um, smudge that. So a lot of times I'll use my breath or I'll use a little air blower um, and that works too as well. So I think the brushes are nice. Any brand will do. I think this is... Alvin's here. It's called the Draftsman's Duster number 2342 and this one's by G uh, See Through which is fine too as well. These are all fine. There's nothing. There's no, you know, favorite of mine as well. A lot of times I don't I don't even use them. So, uh, just to to keep that in mind. Okay. So, that is uh, charcoal pencil and uh, brush. So, I think you get the idea. So, in you know what's inside these, this charcoal here is compressed, compressed charcoal. OK? 
okay? And that's the next thing I want to show you is compressed uh, charcoal sticks. And I, I want to show you the difference between the compressed charcoal and the vine charcoal, which is uh, here. So there's a big difference between the two, and I prefer one over the other, and then later on you might prefer you know, something different than me, which is totally, totally fine. But I'll show you what and why they're different. So uh, let me start with the uh, compressed charcoal. The compressed charcoal comes in these uh, stick-like uh, qualities here. You can see here as well. And you can get them in hard, medium, and soft, depending on what you, you need. And they're bigger and larger uh, and more blunt. You can obviously tell that and they come in a, a packet. So they are nice and big and thick and blunt and look how wide a mark you can get, you know, with that, which is pretty pretty nice and wide and pretty nice. And then of course you can smear that with your hand, smudge that with your hand. And so if you're doing a large drawing, even if it's highly detailed, a large drawing, um, you can use the compressed charcoal stick. And it really, it really sticks to the paper quite nicely, and it can get very rich, and it can get very, very, very dark, um, which is quite, quite, a nice, quite a nice thing to have. So, um, again, they come in hard, medium, and soft, and these nice, big, thick sticks. And you can take these sticks, you can, boom, you can break them, and you can actually take a sandpaper or sandpaper pad and you can actually sharpen these down to a fine point. I, I put them in, believe it or not, I've put them in drills before, like a power drill, and it turns it and you can actually sharpen these into a point, which is really cool. So be mindful that you can adapt and adjust your tools as per needed. That's, I think that's really a, uh, something that not a lot of people talk about, but tools come manufactured, but you can alter them in many different ranges and arrays. Okay, so that's that's compressed charcoal. And it's a wonderful tool, wonderful material. And again, you can erase, erase back into it, so it's very subtractive, right? Look how, look how nice I can cut back into it. And I could take more, more time and more erasers, and I could probably erase out quite a bit. Now, you can't take it all out, but you can take out quite a bit. And again, with the number two eraser, see how hard-edged I can get with some pressure so that takes that out you know, pretty nicely. So that's compressed charcoal. That's the same thing that's in your, your charcoal pencil. So what's in here is the same thing that's what's in these box, just at a different size. So smaller drawing, smaller tip, right? Larger drawing, larger tip. And you can use a combination of these depending upon if you have a large drawing but you need lots of detail you know, uh, here, and if you have uh, a large drawing with a lot of bluntness and a lot of, a lot of coverage, you use the, uh, the compressed charcoal. So let me show you vine charcoal. Vine charcoal is different. It's a different wood that's been burned. And I, I don't really like, well, I don't say like, but I don't really teach vine charcoal in my university classes. And the reason why is as a drawing tool, it doesn't stick as well. I think it's great for sketching on canvas when you want to paint because it has a wispy quality that disappears. So it looks very, very different. And it doesn't get as dark. It can disappear pretty quickly. So that's about as dark as I can get it right in here and it tends to disappear. So it's very, very fragile. It breaks really quickly. But it's a great tool to, to sketch on, um, on, on uh, canvas. Just sketching some circles here. So that you can lay down um, a form or you know, a portrait if you're doing a portrait. Maybe I'll do a little head here. Just adjust the back. Bring this down. And you can, you can kind of wash it away a little bit, especially on canvas. But it's not as dark, it's not as permanent. 
it's vine charcoal and it's, it is different than compressed. So if you go to the art store, wherever you're going, here in Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky or if you're in Bangladesh or Dubai or, or um, Georgia or Dallas, wherever you're at, ask them, hey, do you have compressed or do you have vine? Make sure that you know that they know the difference. Hopefully after this video you'll know that you'll know the difference. So see how that kind of erases out a little bit? It kind of was washes away. So I don't think it's a very great drawing material per se for expressive drawing. Although, you know, I'm sure artists use it in expressive ways. So there are always uh, exceptions, you know, to that, to that rule. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you with charcoal is the uh, chamois. And you're like, okay, what is, what is that? What, what does that mean? Well, <laughs> the chamois is this cloth, and it's made from... Uh, an Italian, former Italian student of mine told me that it's made from Italian or Swiss mountain goat, so alp, alp uh, animals. And they, they come, it comes in a color that looks a little bit more like the back of this sandpaper pad. So this is what you buy it, looks like that. But since I've been using these for a while, they're dark and they're dirty and you want to be dirty. So it's very, very soft kind of cloth. And once you've used it for a while, and you've got a lot of compressed charcoal, see how that kind of blends, you can take it and you can make a big blunt drawing tool out of it. Or you can tone your paper down and see how that makes a nice tone to it. And you can draw in that tone later on, both additively and subtractively. So if I came back with an additive the pencil, like if I was going to do, we'll just do a ball, right? So I'm drawing a circle here. We're going to put it down on the table. Maybe the bat is the back of a table here, right? And let's say the light's going to come in this direction. So the form shadow would fall here, and then the cast shadow would fall there. You know, I could block in my shadow forms a little bit. And then if I wanted to start to erase, I could erase back back into that and it gives an atmospheric tone. And what's great about the chamois, it, it makes charcoal drawing malleable. It's like a wet piece of clay. And so I could come across and say, hey, I don't like that. I can take that off, All right? And then I can restart again. So like, I don't want to draw um, a, uh, a sphere. I want to draw a head and profile. So I'll say, okay, well, here's, here's the oval, ovoid shape for the head, here's the front profile, the chin, and then we'll bring down the uh, jaw, jawline, etc. And now we have, hey, okay, well now we have a head. All right, there we go. And if you didn't like that, you could you could change the whole process and start all over again. See that? It's wonderful that way. And then it can be erased into. It can be drawn subtractively. If I wanted to draw, I changed my mind and I wanted to draw a sphere again, and I can sketch back into that material, and voila, I have another material. So I can go back and erase and change that. So it's kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch. If those of you that are a little older know what I'm talking about, if you're younger, look up Etch-a-Sketch. It's kind of a, you can draw and change and erase, and, it, and it, uh, it's like it's magic. Okay, so that's charcoal in that sense. Just remember that's very, both charcoal and graphite are carbon-based. Graphite is a more mineral, uh, earth mineral, and it's dug out and mined, and then ch uh, charcoal is a material that is burned wood that's been processed into a nice drawing, drawing material. So really wonderful kind of, kind of quality uh, to it there. All right. Okay, so that's charcoal. So let's take a look at, I think it's a good time to take a look at a few erasers now too as well, since I've got sort of a, a charcoal schmear going on in through here. So let's take a look at erasers. Remember this about erasers. Erasers are expressive drawing tools as well. They are a rich source of drawing. They're not only to take away, but they're to add vibrancy and creativity and rhythm and beauty to 
your drawing as well. So keep that in mind. It's not just to take out to make a mistake, but, but to actually give your drawing um, a, uh, a beauty as well, especially if you're drawing subtractively. So I've got the number two pencil. You can see it's starting to get worn down a, a little bit, but we can, I'll just start to show you that uh, a little bit. We'll zoom in here a little, little further. And the number two takes it right off. You can see that. So it's a very hard edged, you know, kind of, kind of a racing tool. You got that. Okay. So let me take my chamois and I'll build another layer so we can take that off. Uh, the, the next erasers I want to show you is the uh, Statler White eraser, which is kind of like the number two, but a little cleaner. So I, I uh, kept this one in the packet. This is a fresh new one. It comes white, and then when you start to use it, look what it look what happens. So that's not a bad thing. It um, it gets used. It's which is great. So it comes. Let me open this up. It um, comes fresh and clean and pristine, but it won't stay that way for too long. And you can buy you know a bunch of these. Or none of this. None of these materials are really expensive. I'm showing you today. They're, they're pretty cheap. So look how fresh and new and clean that is. And it's got these nice, you know, uh, straight edges that they make. And it's just a, a rubber material. And then I've used it for a while, it becomes blunt. But look how nice and carved you can get, you know, into that material. So if you're looking to uh, erase with a real strong uh, hard edge in mind, you know, the, the wide eraser, is is uh, a great great tool with these especially with these harder edges and you can take even larger swaths off like that so it can be a broad, broad tool to take uh, to take quite a bit of material off but it is kind of hard edge so it does leave these these kind of hard edges and it does get worn out over time relatively quickly I would I would I would say. And so, you know, it gets to this blunt kind of kind of level, which is still fine. It takes it off. But if you start, if it starts to get blunt and rounded like this, what I like to, to show my students is, again, here's where you take charge of your, of your material. And I've seen artists serrate these and get into these serrated edges that are really, really cool. But you can take this um, eraser where it's blunt, been blunted and rounded, you can see where it's been rounded off, and you can start to cut it and bring, now cut it somewhere else, don't cut it on your drawing surface, that would be silly, but for, for the sake of time. And see, I can bring back a nice hard edge, just like so, it, and it recreates a nice hard edge. However, don't throw away this, unless you're just super rich. Um, these little drawing tools are great when you want to get into something really detailed. You need to you need to hold your hand in a different way, and so you can just kind of hold on to that little tip and get some nice little erasing tips as well. So I've got a whole jar of these somewhere around my my studio. I think someday I'll take a shot of the, uh, the studio that my office here at the university where I'm where I'm making these videos, and you can kind of see what's going on in the broader picture. But so this is the White Stadler eraser. So that's I think these are great. Get a bunch of these; they're not they're not too expensive, and it's for hard edged, you know, subtractive uh, drawing, which is the the practice of, of erasing. Obviously, and it's a great great tool to have. So that's that. Then uh, then the next one is is um, the, the sort of opposite uh, effect uh, from that, which is uh, the kneaded eraser. And where is that? There it is. Okay, I was looking around. And so I don't have any open and new ones, but I've got, uh, this is actually perfect. I've got this, this one to show you. So the kneaded eraser is a little bit gummier and gooier but it still holds together firm. So if you're brand new to drawing, you haven't seen this, these are a lot of fun. And there's a big difference between, between the two products. So let me put this back down. So I'll keep this one out. We can compare the two. Is obviously it comes, it comes in a little square packet and it's about this color when you, when you buy it, but it won't stay that way long. It'll get dirty. But you can actually sort of self clean it when you rip it apart like this. And then you can make cute little uh, sculptures out of it, gummy bears or whatever. Just don't eat it. Don't chew it. It's not chewing gum. Okay. So 
don't do that. And then you can kind of see how it starts to self clean a little bit. Okay, here's the big difference. So I'll show you the hard edged erasing you can get by the, the white Stadler. But with the kneaded, like for instance, let's say you're, well, let me just show you first, is it's a very soft, subtle erasing. So I'm not putting down a whole lot of pressure, but you can see where it's, you know, I can take it off very slowly and it kind of glows. So I can get a very soft edge. So the difference between the two is a soft edge kind of erasing, a gradual kind of erasing, and a, or a more hard edge. You know, which do you need? And you can tell where, see where it's picked it up, it's dirty. So now I can rip this apart again, it sort of self cleans. I don't know where the graphite goes or the charcoal goes, and you can use this for either either uh, charcoal or graphite or other, other processes uh, that I'll show you. So this is, these aren't exclusive just to charcoal. Um, but then I can continue to go and go and go and erase and take off and get quite a bit of it off. You can't get all the way off. The, this paper has got ridges to it, like peaks and valleys, right? And so it's going to get in those. You can't take it all off, but you can get quite a bit. So it gives you that soft, softer edged erasing quality. So with the two of these together, you can do a lot of different type of erasing and erasing uh, marks. So let's say I'll take a little bit of my um, compressed charcoal here, and I'll rub this back so we can kind of make that a little bit, a little bit darker, like so. So let's say if I was going to do, I'll do a quick, little quick uh, demo. Like if I'm drawing a sphere on a table, right? So there's the sphere. You can see part of that, and then you see on the table here, maybe the light source is kind of coming from the top and through here. So I've put down a form shadow, and then a cast shadow I'll draw. Maybe just a little extra tone for effect. And then I can take my kneaded eraser, and I can start to gently erase out where the light's going to be. Maybe the highlight would start here, so I may just start to gently take out, you know, a little bit of that. And you can kind of press it down like a stamp and see how this just starts to shape and mold. I'm not going to go into any kind of detail, we'll just keep it crude, but you can see where that starts to take out the light of what I'm drawing, right? In the, in the put down, push down a little pressure and you can see I can start to make a little highlight coming in a little bit further like that. And if I put a little coarse shadow in through here, we can see this spear start to jump. Change my edge a little, little bit through there, quite a bit as well. Now, if I wanted to come across on the back side over here, and like there was a reflective line back here and I needed this edge to be sharp, I'd pick up my white ruler, excuse me, my white eraser, and I might start to use that, get it started, but then if I wanted this to be soft, I could take, then I could take my kneaded eraser and start to erase that through and keep that softer and more atmospheric, but I needed that edge to be sharp, so I used I used the, uh, the sharp white eraser. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of difference. And then the great thing again about the chamois, look at that, boom, I can take that off or, or smudge it back and then we're, we're starting from point, point zero. Okay, so you've got the white Stadler, you've got the kneaded eraser, we've got the number two pencil. There's also the pink pearl. There's not a lot of difference between, if you can see that, it's this pink pearl there. There's not too much difference between these two. There's just more of it here than it is here. These act a lot of the same, and uh, I think that's fine, whichever you're comfortable with. You can cut into this as well, but it, it's kind of a hard-edged eraser. So I use the kneaded eraser, eraser quite a bit, but I do will use these hard-edged erasers um, as, as per needed. The pink pearl is a little bit stouter, meaning that it's got a little bit more life to it. These tend to get very soft quickly, but they have a nice supple quality to them over the pink pearl. So they're both great. Just depends on what you're needing in your process. And I'll use all these during, during the, um, all the videos that myself and, and other artists are gonna make. So the people I bring in will, will use a, a range of these two. These are probably you know, basic materials of drawing. So again, soft edge versus the hard edge erasers. Now, something else I wanna show you 
that hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll find pretty cool, you may, may not know about it, is the electric eraser. So let me bring this jumbo guy in through uh, over here. So let me pull out the camera a little bit and show you the electric eraser. Now this is a big mamba jamba, okay? This is a big one. So you can see I can, I'm running the motor a little bit. So architects use these. This one's a Koenor number 2800E. I have no idea what that means. I've, I've, I've had two or three, three of these in my uh, lifetime as an artist and they're fantastic. I've used them so much with one of the motors went out. But um, anyway, you push this button and it turns this, sh this a cartridge shaft in here and it turns it, it revolves it. Now this little tip here, this little white plastic thing, I put that on, it's a binder. It binds in, in like a tourniquet, it holds the uh, eraser that goes into it, that turns. It comes with rings, but the rings get worn over time and I've never I've been too lazy to go buy a replacement. So I've just had these little ties, I'll tie it on, little plastic ties and I'll cut it there and then uh, it works as a nice ring so this goes down and up so that's the electric eraser part of it that's the machine head this one's pretty expensive it's probably 150 bucks you can buy smaller and cheaper ones for 15 or 20 with little tiny cartridges that work pretty well too so let me show you the cartridge so these come in a pack and they're like pencil tips let me get this open here there we go Big old grubby fingers, I'm rough with materials. All right, so they come in these, you can see them now, these, these shafts, like so, right? And then these long tube shafts. Now they go down into the, the motor head, like so. And then you force it, kind of just gently force it in, and it goes all the way in. Sometimes they go, they can go all the way out, in through here and out. So you get it to a place where you want it to, to hold, you want too much out, and then you put your ring or your collar up to about the edge and you tighten it, okay? So you got that. Then you can turn it, turn it on, and watch this. You can erase out material. So I've used the electric eraser, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that. I've used the electric eraser in all kinds of aspects for fine detail through graphite, through charcoal, through wax pencil will take it off. Um, and it acts as a very super fine, super clean way to erase. And so that's one way, but see, look how blunt that is. See how blunt that end is? I want to show you a trick. And again, this goes back to talking about controlling your tools, which is important. You are in control. So you can take, what I like to do is um, I'll open this shaft up a little bit and let me come down is get a little bit more out and available and I'll take sandpaper. Where's my sandpaper pad? There it is. And so, and I usually do this, I don't do this on top of my drawing. I think you get the idea of an instructional video and you can start to sand down the end of it over time to a very fine point. Relatively fine. Now you can buy the erasers in different hardnesses and you can buy them for ink, you can buy them for and then for dry material. And the harder they are, I like the hard ones because the harder they are, the the longer they'll hold that super fine tip. So you can see now I'm starting to sculpt it. And I'll bring a different pad in. Is this sand is this a type of sandpaper pad for sharpening? your pencil and I can take it and run it along the edge and I can chisel it, sculpt it. I think I just about got where I want it. And take a look at that. See the difference now in the, the edge. And then you can come in here and get a much more fine you know, type of erasing 
so you can get super fine if you wanted like a tiny little highlight you know on um, uh, a glistening eyeball you can get that you can get all kinds of finite you know uh, erasing you know uh, type marks that you'll want to make but it's also good for taking out a lot of material in kind of a controlled way too as well and then see it gets more blunt again so I think that the uh, harder the, sh the shaft that you can use is, is better uh, for finite uh, detail but that's the again that's the electric eraser that works I think super well so again these are these are they're not cheap they're pretty expensive so don't go rushing out and buy one unless you really really want one um, but you can get them in uh, smaller little brands you can buy like at about this size for little bitty cartridges and they work decently well this has got a lot of power to it over time pretty pretty nice tool okay so I think that is um, all of the erase uh, the charcoal and all of the er erasing materials I want I well I've got one more over here and this is kind of a hard hard eraser too it's called the ePure the, the mapped or MAPED M-A-P-E-D I guess MAPED or mapped and it's kind of a hard hard tool there's a lot of different uh, other brands out there but uh, I think you get the idea. You want a range that will give you hard edge versus soft edge. I think that's really what you want and I think the brands that I've shown you will get you that uh, pretty pretty concisely and actually uh, pretty quickly. Okay, so that is the that's charcoal and graphite and your erasing tools. Okay, so let's take a look at now uh, sharpeners and sandpaper. So I've shown you some sandpaper, you know, already, and this is just from your local hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, or your local little mom and pop shop. Um, so that that's great, and you can get it in different grits. This is, uh, I think, 60, which may be a little rough. It depends on what you want to sharpen for. So the lower numbers with sandpaper pad, the 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 stronger, coarser the grit. In the higher number, like 220, 120, it's finer grit. You can get a finer point. So you can go buy sheets of sharp uh, 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 sandpaper, or you can buy these what I call these sort of doctor uh, um, little throat throat. Uh, checkers I suppose but anyway um, these come in these little sharpening packs and they come with this little paper and you flip it up and it's got these wonderful sandpaper pads in this little pack and so you take your pencil and you rub it and I'll show you that in a second and then when one gets you uh, used you just flip it over and you can you can use it and can continue to use until it it gets all the way through and then I guess you just you toss it out so these these are inexpensive they both are inexpensive sometimes the sheets are better but either one is fine it's up to you it's a personal personal preference sharpening tools I'll say this is that I really prefer the carpenter knife which I have here and uh, a knife pack which I have here uh, as well so the knives uh, the pack comes in there and then there's also the uh, exacto the exacto knife uh, as well here I, I don't think the exacto knife is or is easy to control when you sharpen I think these are better for cutting out tools for for design applications nothing wrong with the exacto knife if you have it it's better than than using you know or having nothing or using your teeth right to try to try to carve out a pencil so you know don't use that uh, but I do like the the knife blades and then this knife pack these Stanley blades come here and then you can open one maybe I can sometimes they they come in sometimes they don't yeah there we go okay and so these come in individual blades like so and these these happen to be called Fat Max. Sorry, Max, if you're out there watching, I'm not trying to call you fat. Trust me, I'm not. Uh, but they come in in these 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 uh, knife blades, and they have two ends to them, and so they have the long long blade there, and you uh, you put them into the the carpenter knife. You open this up 
I'm not going to go through that. And you put them in, and it and it retracts and it extends, and you can you can sharpen your pencil. And so when these get dull, kind of like this one is, you can you can sharpen. And so I do prefer the carpenter knife quite a bit over the exacto knife. So that's what I use to sharpen tools. Is I'll cut, and I'm going to do a video later on how to sharpen. So I won't go through that, but I'll cut with these, shave back, certainly with the carpenter knife, and then use the, these tools to, the sandpaper pads, to uh, get a very fine point to the pencil. That's what you, that's what you use those for. But I'll, I'll get into that at a little bit later time. Okay, so that's sharpening and sanding down uh, your tools. There are other drawing tools I want to show you that you may or may not be aware of and the next one is the colored pencils and I'm going to show you something a little bit different. I think everybody knows the um, Prismacolor which is a great brand and I, I, I certainly like them but I also use and I teach uh, my students to use the Koenor Progresso color pencil, which are these, and the re here's why I like them, is that they are pure color pencil throughout, from tip to the back, and they uh, are have a, a wax coating uh, inside them, or not inside them, but on the outside, so that they that holds that pigment together, but unlike uh, like a regular you know pencil, they don't have a wood shaft which I think is, is great, in meaning that you get more, more lead to expose. So I can turn it to the side like so. And it looks, it looks and feels like a Conte crayon, like a master drawing without the smudging. I'm you know, putting my finger down decently firmly and they don't smudge. That's one of the, one of the things that I like. And I, I use these quite a bit in teaching and I have my students use them uh, when they start working with the figure because it, it eases them into the transition of working uh, with a difficult subject matter like the figure in all its aspects. And um, they don't have to worry in the beginning about all the smudging. And then we, we transition to charcoal into Conte crayon, which is a little bit more difficult to hold. So these are the progressive uh, Koenor. They're made by Koenor, and you can buy them in packs with various colors. Or I, I tell my students, just to buy them individually and you can buy the black, the brown here, or the sanguine, which is this burnt orange kind of bloody uh, tone, which I like. It's, they all, and they look like old master studies. So you'll, you'll see me, the videos that you'll see now in the future, you'll see me using these quite a bit. And they just don't smudge, but they do smudge a little. I'm not going to say they don't, but they smudge, smudge quite a bit less than, than what... Um, you'd be used to. And these are wax-based uh, color pencils. So the progressive the black, the sanguine, or the burnt orange, or the brown in uh, color pencil. I think you can't go wrong with that. The only drawback to these is that they do break pretty easy. So if you drop them, and that guess that segues into the, the next thing I like. If you drop them, don't throw them away. Like if you get a little tiny shaft in here, I don't want to drop and break it. But buy yourself a, a couple of uh, pencil extenders. So let me show you what those are. These are, uh, here's a couple of different qualities. It, these are used to extend the life of your pencil. Meaning that when you, when you, you, work so hard, right? You're working hard and your pencil's down to a half inch nub. You can put it in this or even even longer than that. So I like this brand. It's another Koenor brand. You just take the, sh the top of the shaft and kind of move it down and put this inside of it and then lock it up. Actually, I'm going to break one just to show you uh, what you can do. So let's break it here. And then these are these pencils, that's the only drawback is they are fragile. So, you know, some students might take this and say, okay, it's done, I'm going to throw it away. Ah, don't do that, don't do that. It's buy yourself a pencil extender, put it in, right, and then lock it in, and then look at that. I can, I can now hang on to it and utilize it in ways that are wonderful. And you can also come and go and sharpen them as well. And I like to sharpen these mostly with the handheld tool, like I do the graphite. 
um, and I can just put it in there, sharpen away, and then come back and have a nice, nice sharp tool. And so these get to a very fine point as well. So they are waxy, meaning that the point will get blunt uh, pretty quick because they're soft as well. So these are the uh, the Kohenor Progresso with the pencil extender, and there's other different pencil extenders. These kind of twist and turn. I forget what brand these are, and they go in like so. Sometimes they're they're a little hard to get in in the beginning. You kind of have to you have to force them for a while. But there you go. You got it. You see that, and then you can start to take on and and keep on at it even when you break your pencil because you're going to drop these and you're gonna break them because they're so fragile. Even the acrylic uh, uh, coating on the side of it holds it together and you wanna shave that off when you're sharpening, but it just, it, they're so fragile. So dropping them is gonna happen and you're gonna break. So don't throw them away. Just buy yourself a uh, Dermot or Kohenor pencil extender and you'll be good to go. Now there are other color pencils on the market. We could get into that later, but these are the three you're gonna, uh, this, this type of brand, the Progresso, um, you'll see me use a lot in demos with the figure, and I'll have you use that. I just think that you can, again, you can turn them to the side. Hopefully I can show you that, and you can see how much broader stroke you can get. You can't do that as well with the, the, um, the, wood, the wood tubing behind it. Just, it's just harder to do that. Okay? All right, so... We've got the, that is the color pencil. All right, so those are those. I'll set these over to the side. And so the next thing I'll show you is um, uh, going into uh, pens. And we've got several different type pens. Let me, I'll move uh, a sheet of paper over so we can kind of see what we've got here. There we go. All right, so you can, start to think about pins and there are lots of different pins that um, that you can buy here and I'll put put some out here as well some I use well most of all these I've used before certainly and there's some ink here as well let me see if I can turn these to the side you can see see them here and I can talk a little bit about them as well so let me say this about uh, pens. Probably the most accessible pens to use that I teach with my students are these two. And these are the pit pen, pit pens. And they come in a black, again, the black, the brown, and uh, the uh, sepia tone. And I like to have my students buy mostly small or fine. You can buy them in a brush tip. Um, and they, they're, they're really wonderful. You know, pins so they don't smudge. There's ink inside. They come in a cartridge, and they have a nice fine, fine nib, nib to them. And you can do all kinds of, you know, cool things with, with drawing. Do like a little head study in through here. You get the idea. <clears throat> and they come, again, the black or the brown, or the sepia tone. I think is is what I like to have my students use. And you'll see me uh, utilize these all the time. If you've seen some of my sketchbooks I've made before, you've seen those as well. So that's the, the pit pen made by uh, Faber Castell, P-I-T-T, -T, uh, pit. These are great to have. But what I use uh, a lot of times is these um, the fountain pen. Now these can get very pricey, but I don't use a, a pricier one. Um, they, this is also made by Faber-Castell, and it's about $25, $30. But it's a fountain tip that you can screw and unscrew. And inside comes with a cartridge. In the cartridge, I'll close this up. The cartridge comes, you can buy these in the J. Herbin brand, which I prefer. And I like the, the light of tea, or basically just the kind of a brown, brownish tone. And they come in several of these cartridges, like so, with a full ink. And you can see this is a, the end where the ink will dispense. And you, you, you take this cartridge, I'm going to put this one back. These are about $6 a packet. And then you run this into that end, and it, it kind of just pops in, it screws in. 
and then the ink flows through that so I'll close that up and then it makes a nice uh, a nice mark to it. These are they're a little bit um, I think just richer in terms of their mark making capability than the pit pens. I think they're just a little bit more beautiful to look at. Um, they are, the difference is in the ink though, this, the ink of the, the J. Herbin brand is water soluble. So it will run, sometimes it will smear a little bit. Like if I put some down, let's say over here, and I can see how that smears a little bit quickly, and then water could take that up a little bit. I still prefer it, I just don't use washes with it. With the pit pens, they dry pretty quickly, look at that. And so, if I'm using washes, I will probably use a pit pen. Um, and so, I can sketch with a pen, and then, um, I can put washes and watercolor over it and it won't it won't dissolve. So I think that that's pretty nice. So you've got the fountain pen, which I think is is a wonderfully expressive tool, but mostly just for sketching, I think, I think only uh, as well. All right, and so um, you can buy different inks, India inks as well with a pen, a pen and nib, which I don't have any right on me. I, I don't really use them that often. So I don't teach them that often. They're a little bit harder to control for, for beginning intermediate students. But India ink and a fountain pen dipped, pen nib dipped in that, you can, a croquo pen, you can get all kinds of uh, sketching. I'll probably use that in demos later on. I can get into that a little, a little bit later. There's also the ballpoint pen. Don't underestimate its value. It is a wonderfully expressive drawing tool. And this is just right off the... Um, the, our countertop at home, I brought this in, just a ballpoint pen, and you can get all kinds of wonderful marks, and you can feather these, and, and um, they don't dissolve uh, water-wise, and um, any, any tool you know, is great. They're not felt tip. Felt tip is different, and felt tip is fine, kind of like a Sharpie, Sharpie pen, but the, the, just the old ballpoint pen, we'll use this some too, is a wonderful tool uh, for drawing. So, and you have the Sharpie here. The Sharpie I think a lot of you know about. It's very dark and, and thick. It's a permanent marker, um, kind of like a felt tip, but um, you'll see me use some of these because you can turn them to the side. You can actually kind of let the ink run drown, down and get dry, and you can, it kind of feels like charcoal. They're great for demoing because they're easy to see. And so that's the Sharpie, but they are permanent. They are pretty blunt. They're not, they're not very exotic and not very beautiful, but they're great for, for um, demo drawing or you might just, that's all the thing, only thing you have. The Sharpie might be, might be nice, but you know, in the hands of a creative artist, you can, any tool, any ink pen can be, I think, pretty, pretty amazing. And I've never tried these out. I just bought these. These are called Copic multi-liner set in sepia tone. I just saw these at the art store the other day and I thought, let me pick these up. They're a little pricey. They're like $20, but I, I just wanted to see what they're like. And this is a nice fine, fine nipped pen in through here. Let's see, we'll get in, get in a little tighter and see what's going on here. And they seem to have a nice kind of quality to them, kind of like the pit pen, but maybe a little bit more, a little bit more expensive. So I'd have to test them out even further. So there's a lot more more brands than just the pit pen out there. Um, use use what you can afford. That's that's the, the the name of the game. And there are plenty of different colors out there too as well. But I do like to teach my students to use black, brown, and sepia. Just to keep it basic, keep it traditional, but I am, I am uh, not someone who uh, is orthodox in that. I, I'll like to break up their routine and certainly have uh, different color components, even when the time comes, but most of what we'll do will be more traditional, you know, drawing, drawing based. Okay, so those are pens. And a couple things I wanna show you too, as well, I'm gonna change papers here is we'll get into the Conte crayon and I want to show you the pack of Conte. Conte is kind of a little bit more chalky or that you can it's called Bister or Conte and here they are here. 
So Conte Upperi. They are a little chalkier, a little harder and thicker, but they, you'll, you'll find them, they'll favor comparably to pastel or charcoal a little bit. And I've got a sanguine in through here and they're very smudgeable in through there. So this kind of material was used quite a bit er, in earlier time before charcoal or graphite was used. A very kind of earth tone, chalky, you know, kind of quality, and they can be additive and subtractive. You can erase, you can erase back in into into them as well. But they give you this nice kind of kind of sort of like almost in a way uh, colored charcoal kind of feel to them. And you can use your chamois for that. And they come in black, and they come in brown, like the one uh, here. And they also come in in the sanguine too as well. And you can mix them as well. A lot of master drawings in the Renaissance and certainly beyond we'll use that. They're not quite as smudgy as as charcoal which can be kind of nice. You can kind of get a hatched mark and you can kind of get a soft mark too as well and then of course they they do subtract as well. You can see the subtractive kind of quality. So that is Conte Crayon. I think they're a wonderful product uh, to use as well. And something analogous to that is also the Carbothello uh, pencil, uh, which you'll see me use later on. They're a little, they're kind of like the Progresso pencil. They look like it, right? So they look kind of like the same thing, but the Carbothello is a more pastel type pencil, big chalk kind of pastel in, inside the, the, wood, the wood shaft. So these are Carbothellos, and there's Rembrandt, there are other brands, but I prefer the Carbothello. But they're the same, they're, they kind of feel like the uh, Conte crayon, but they're inside the shaft of the pencil. So more, you know, more finer, you know, kinds of things. I think they work, you know, pretty, pretty nicely in that, in that sense. And you can get a whole array of colors, but I'll, I'll limit it to black, brown and, and uh, sanguine. So these are the Carbothello uh, pastel, pastel pencils. And there you can see Carbothello, I think, in through there. All right. Um, there are a couple of things to use. You, you've noticed I've been uh, smearing around with my hand and also my sh the chamois, but you can use other tools as well as the tortillon, which is this little guy here, or the stump. And essentially what they are, they're not smokable. You can't smoke these, by the way. They're not doobies. Um, they are smudge tools. So if I want to take and smudge, and they give a little bit different mark. I don't use these often in my practice, but some artists do. And they're all cardboard paper. And so let's take, let's take this little sketch I did of this you know, sphere here. And you can take this in and see how I can smudge, can smudge that down with the stump or the tortillon. I think the stump is called the stump because um, it's a full shaft of paper, and it doesn't. You don't. You the uh, tortillon. You can actually unfurl and unroll, which I don't prefer to do to any any of them. And so I actually take the stump, and when it gets really dirty. Like you can tell, it's like dirt, dirty on that end. I actually take my sandpaper pad, and you can actually, again, taking control of your tools will really help. So these are great smudging tools. The tortillon and the stump, and you can see where I've cleaned, you can see where I've cleaned that up some in through there, and that gives me a nice, clean, fresh mark. You could actually dip, dip into that, and say if I put down a tone, I'll put down a tone over here, and you, you want to use this end to draw with, you could actually dip into that, right? And then come over here and draw with it in some very light way. Artists will use that, they'll dip into that. If they want a very light line, like they're gonna draw maybe over this in ink or whatever, so you can do that, it's very, very subtle. You can see that's real subtle actually. But you can see, you can see where I could sketch with that if, if I wanted to as well. All right, so that's the tortillons in the stump, and of course you can see I bought some extreme sizes from the very large to the very small, or smaller, you can even get smaller than that, and then the stump 
again, they can be sharpened and manipulated. You could put these into a power drill and you can sharpen these up and look how look how pointed. That's actually that actually hurts. That's actually pretty a pretty pointed little tip right there as well. So keep that keep that in mind. Okay, so I've got those, um, and then a couple extra things I want to show you is rulers. I like to teach my students to buy hard edges and generally uh, two feet long, excuse me, 24 inches long ruler is great to have. You can buy them with the drafting head on that if you want, and that's okay you, you, uh, if you don't have that. But uh, stainless steel is great because you can wipe these on if they have the rubber backing. I don't like them as much. I like to, I don't really use the rubber backing that much because they can smudge and smear. I use the, the other backing, um, stainless steel on the paper until I need a measure, obviously, and then I use that. So this one's only 12, 15 inches, but you can get one that's, that's 24 or get them to your need needs. That's important. The, the next aspect, which I think is important, are the, the, uh, the triangles, see-through triangles. You can see I've, I'm holding a couple up and then I'll pull out a little bit, is that you can see through them. So um, obviously their first component is when you want to make straight edges, right? When you want to make a hard edge. That's obviously, we everybody gets, gets that. So they make a nice, clean, crystal clear edge. They're great for linear perspective, or you, you want to draw and you can, you can see, but what I like over the the rulers is that I can see through them. You can't see through the metal unless you're a super woman or man or whatever. Uh, I can't see through them, but here I can. I can see through this. I can see through when I'm drawing a line where I want to make a line. I can totally, totally see through that, so I'm good to go. However, what I like about this is that I use them as a masking tool. So if I'm doing, let's say I'm doing a, a long rendering of some beautiful drawing, whatever, and I'm not working over here, but I need to work over here. So I can put this down, it doesn't smudge, and put my hand on top of it, kind of like a mall stick, right? And then draw sketch over here, pick it up and move it. And the great thing is I can see through it. So if I need to uh, take this off, and relate back to my drawing, I can pick it up and I can see through and I don't have to continue to, like if I'm using a, ra uh, a rag, I can't see if I'm holding this down and drawing, I can't see through that. So the triangle, I can see through. I'd say get yourself a couple of these. These are great tools to have uh, in your repertoire and they'll make a difference, I think, in your, your drawing practice. Any brand will do, you don't have to get them too big. Um, and you can buy some them from very small to, to quite to quite large. This is probably about a medium a medium size. Okay, so a couple of other things in terms of tape. The <clears throat> great tape to use is uh, artist grade uh, masking tape. Excuse me, there is just this white tape is. Manila tape or white artist white tape. There we go, which is pretty uh, pretty standard. You just tear it off and tape it down. And when I when I tape a drawing, I just tape the corners. And I'll, I'll tell you how to set up a drawing at a, at a later time in our basics basic section. It, but also I think what's great is these drafting dots too as well. Uh, these are little little dots that you peel off, and you can just place them down at the each corner of your drawing, they hold they hold pretty nicely. They're a little bit more expensive, obviously, um, but they're they're great. I think they're great to have as a as a taping drawing tool. So that's that. That's tape. Don't use duct tape, please. Don't use uh, you know heavy box tape. That's going to be rough. And then the drawing shield is a great thing. You may not know about it. It's a little tin pla. Uh, metal shield and it's great for finite uh, uh, template erasing. So if you've got something that is that you're making a drawing and you need to um, erase that little area subtractively uh, or whatnot, these are great. And they're coming, they're really thin. You can see how paper thin they are and they're metal uh, and, they're, and they're nice to have for little masking areas of, of, they're mostly used by architects, but 
artists use these two, these as well. And so the little little drafting masking uh, are called a, the erasing uh, shield. There you go. These are pretty nice. They're by Alvin. And then lastly, um, when I'm doing really technical drawings, perspective drawings, the technical pen is great to have. It's a kind of uh, sort of looks like a, a, a ballpoint pen, but it's not. It's got a, a shaft here, and you open it up, and you can see where this grabs and opens like that. And you put your little uh, metal, excuse me, your graphite uh, tip in there, and it grabs it for you. And you can get down to a very fine point. So it grabs it like so. You can see it coming out like a snake. Grabs your, your graphite tip. And then these sharpeners uh, come in this little jar, and you can you put them down, and then you run run it through, and you sharpen it. I think my lead is is so short. Maybe I can get, hopefully I can show you. I think it's sharpening a little bit. But these can get down to super, super uh, 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 tight, tight point. I don't think I budgeted my time. I don't think I have any any uh, leads to show you, but you get the idea. But these can get super, super tight, and they're great for very, very fine points. And you can buy cartridges of the graphite shafts in a range of 6H, very hard, to 6B, very small. So this comes out, and all the, the graphite is collected in there. So, but you can only use them for technical uh, pencils. They don't work with the with the normal wood shaft. Like you can't you can't stick the, the wood in in uh, sharp. It doesn't work that way. It's got to be the, the technical pen. Okay. All right. So I think that covers the full basics. I've got I think I'm just about everything out there. You can you can almost think of. There's still powdered charcoal. Um, yeah, I've got some over here on my shelf. I could show you to kind of finish off. Remember you have the powdered. Uh, graphite and the powdered charcoal. It's the same kind of thing as the graphite um, where it's it's pulverized and it comes in a flowery uh, flower-like substance but now it's just in charcoal and it's much drier. Okay so charcoal and graphite you'll feel that difference as we go through and explore together that charcoal is much much drier. It's wood, burned wood that's been pulverized and ground into a, a powdered like basement. Uh, 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 consistency base and the, again the, the graphite is much more oily very greasy and, and very oily they're very very different drawing drawing experiences okay all right I think that covers it so uh, if you have any questions have any concerns email me um, certainly let me hear from you out there and uh, good luck and we'll see you uh, next time at the Drawing Database. I'm Mark Leone for NKU's Drawing Database. Take care.